Syracuse lacrosse and Cornell lacrosse do battle once again after a year off. Boy, does it feel good to say that. And Syracuse and Cornell for the first time in quite some time do battle here at Sholkoff Field. Hello everyone and welcome to ESPN Plus for this top 15 matchup between two of the best teams in Division One lacrosse. Christian de Guzman here alongside Tom LaFalse and Tom these are two teams that are looking to get right back on the right side of things both coming off some heartbreaking losses especially Cornell double overtime loss to the Penn Quakers this past weekend. Yeah, I mean, we've now hit April, so the stretch run is here. Um, both of these teams coming off disappointing close losses this past weekend, so I'm sure both of them feel like they need to come out and get a win tonight. No love lost between these two programs. They're always a battle. Cornell's had the better of late, I believe, winning the last contest two years ago at the Dome in overtime, uh, and Syracuse the one before that, so I'm sure we're going to have a really great college lacrosse game here tonight at Sholkoff Field. The few members on both teams that were still here for both of those games remember that 16-15 win for the Big Red at the JMA Wireless Dome and immediately a face-off violation against Mason Cohn will give the Big Red the first possession here. And, and this is an important storyline for us is this face-off game. Syracuse, very strong face-off team, and Cornell uh, is, has been hovering just below 50% on the year, so good for Cornell to get that first opening opportunity. And it will give the first opening salvo to this Cornell Big Red offense. You have two of the most prolific offenses on display here today. Yeah, Spencer Wertheim will work it behind Cage. Here's Hugh Kelleher. Statistically, Syracuse has the edge in terms of their the quality of their defense and their specialty teams, uh, whereas Cornell may be a little bit of an advantage on the offensive side, but very minimal. Kevin all the way up top, 30 to shoot. Loses the defender and gets checked on the way in by Riley Figueres, and the ground ball goes into the stick of Will Mark. Spencer Wertheim unable to come up with the ground ball inside there as Syracuse gets the first clear of the game. And Sam Alexo, of course, who else would be taking the ball across the midfield line? One of the best transition and defensive long stick mids in the entire nation, Sam Alexo. And here comes this vaunted Syracuse offense. Inside the shot and the score immediately for Sam English. And Cornell is no stranger to Sam English. Him and Jake Stevens running on that Princeton midfield line for many, many years. And Sam English comes back to haunt Princeton once again. And it was just Excuse good me, ball movement Cornell. in the substitution <laughs> game there. Syracuse was able to create the unsettled situation and come down and create the first goal of the game. I mean, Sam English loves to play against Cornell. Last time he played against the Big Red in 2022, he had five goals against Cornell, and he puts Syracuse up here early. Again, as Tom mentioned, this is the battle also to watch at the faceoff bat. Cornell, without Jack Cascadden, hasn't had the best of runs at faceoffs at times. Mason Cohn has really revitalized this Syracuse faceoff unit. Jack Follows was on the wings there, the close defense, but couldn't quite pick up the ground ball. And here is Jake Stevens coming the other way. One of the things you'll see from both of these offenses is they are in the top five nationally in assisted goals, right? So you're going to see good ball movement. It's, it's obviously dodging's a part of it, but also to look for the open man, create the higher percentage shot. Michael Leo will take Charlie Box behind Cage. This is an area Cornell has struggled a little bit with. Penn was able to take advantage out of the midfield. And Christian Moulet was looking for an option right on the crease and eventually picked up by Matt Tully. And how, how big of a test is this for Matt Tully, the freshman keeper, now facing off against a vaunted Syracuse attack as Luke Gilmartin just gathers this ball. And CJ Curse backs up. It'll be interesting to see who Syracuse decides to match up against C.J. Curse. Right now it's Billy Dwan. And a quick double going over to Curse before the second midfield comes up. Here's A.J. Nikolic, one of many talented freshmen for Cornell. Ryan Sheehan. So far it is Syracuse defense being stingy, keeping things away from in front of Mark's cage. And this is what you'll see a lot from Cornell as well, the invert game. Nick Nickwick. 
And good ball movement still coming from Cornell. Here's Andrew Dalton. Hounded by Figueres and a great check from Roddy Figueres. Gets absolutely destroyed though as the Cornell ride continues to be hyper aggressive and Michael Long is going to get called for a push. I thought that was from the front side. Um, good physical ride by Cornell. That's one of the areas they need to produce for them because if they're not getting face-off wins, they need to get those extra possessions in the riding game. Teams are only clearing 81.5% against Cornell. That's one of the lowest marks in the nation. This Cornell ride has been so, so effective the entire year, and it almost produced another turnover there. English directed to stay on side before heading off for a sub. As the second midfield comes out for Syracuse. Here's Joey Spolina. And a rip and a score from Owen Hiltz. The ball moves so fast for Syracuse on the offensive end, and you saw it right there. Again, a problem for Cornell in the substitution game. Didn't quite have the matchups all set. Cornell defense was scrambling a little bit, uh, and then Syracuse able to find the step-down shot and this is a game important for Joey Spelina, who has come under fire from some critics for not exactly having the highest point scoring total against some tougher competition. And now the Cornell defense is definitely a little bit less powerful than in previous years, especially with Gavin Adler at times, as this is a face-off violation against Silos. So a face-off violation on each end. Quickly, that can add up for both teams. And more importantly, it gives another chance for the offense to possess the ball for Syracuse. I mean, both of these teams are hovering around 15 goals a game, and you kind of expect that number to stand for both sides. Christian Moulet, the Lehigh transfer. All the way up top. Wants to rip from Owen Hiltz. It's a quick 3-0 lead for the Syracuse Orange, and it's two goals from the lefty sniper, Owen Hiltz. And again, there's an opportunity where you get the defense rotating, you're going to see here, they break some down. Cornell, slow to come, but then two guys came, and then the pass directly right in front of the cage, and that's where you love to be if you're a shooter, right? You got everything that you can possibly shoot out there to, to be able to beat uh, Tully and just blows it by him up high. And this has been a good year for Owen Hills, returning from injury back in 2022, and continues just to settle in and... Absolutely destroy opposing defenses as a big faceoff win goes the way of the Big Red. Danny Bacafola with the ground ball there for Cornell. We expect him to see a little bit more time tonight. He played a lot in his first couple years at Cornell, not, not as much the last few. But with defensive midfield injuries piling up for both sides, you expect a bit more depth to show on both sides as well. Bacafola, one of those depth pieces at LSM. First has a short stick, Carter Rice on him. Decides not to take too much more advantage of the matchup. We'll get it right back. Slide needs to come quickly, and it does. Kirst will get it on cage, but it looks like it either hit pipe or hit the ground. And now he loses the ball, and Mark picks it up in the crease. Not sure that's a great possession for Cornell. You want to be able to, you know, maybe let your defense settle in a little bit. You, you finally had an opportunity, and now here's an unsettled ch chance. Rice has Firth out. Caught out on defense, and a charging ball will just fizzle wide. Look like they're from Luke Roa. Excuse me. Syracuse doing a nice job in these unsettled situations in the sub game, getting guys lots of space. It is indeed Luke Roa who had that last shot. And he'll settle things down. And just, you see with both teams, just the breadth of offensive options that they both have at their disposal. And an intercepted pass, picked up by Mule, who's been a great, great attacker, transfer from Lehigh, second straight attacker that has done well from Lehigh for Syracuse. Jackson Burkwistle will push a bouncer wide. Both goalies got to be ready yeah. for some rubber in this game. Not afraid to shoot yeah. the ball here. And the, and the ball's moving fast on both sides, especially from Syracuse, one of their big strengths, continues to pass the ball with such speed. Jay against Spelina on a good first save for Matt Tully beating and meeting Spelina high. And Kyle Smith will get the clear. 
It is loud here at Cholkoff Field. Not too many, not exactly the most beautiful uh, weather for lacrosse. It's about 42 degrees and it rained most of the day here in Ithaca. But the rain has subsided and the crowd is definitely plentiful for both sides. Can the second midfield get a spark here for Cornell? AJ Nickwick has had two goals in each of his last three games. He's been great ever since stepping onto that second midfield line. Same with Ryan Goldstein. But Goldstein has passed wayward for Sheehan. And an oh. over a back will give the ball right back to the orange. And they've got numbers here. Syracuse looking to move in transition. And Hiltz was looking for Figueres, the close defender who was on the opposite end. And Matt Dooley is on the offensive end trying to pick up this ground ball. Bodies collide with Staub, absolutely flattening Matt Wright. And that will be a flag and most likely will give a man up opportunity for the Orange. Now, it was definitely from the front. He maybe got his arms up a little bit. This is one where you might see a more than a one minute penalty. It's a one-minute full-time penalty it's going up against Brendan Staub. So this becomes very, very important, especially with a team like Syracuse, who last year was reveled for their incredible man-up offense, continues to be so this year with battling at 42.2% on the power play. You know this is a Syracuse team that wants to score quickly, and with Mason Cohn at the dot, get the ball right back for even more man-up opportunities. Yeah, and Cornell is only... The opponents for Cornell are, are clicking along at 36%, only 42nd ranked in the country, so not a necessary strength for Cornell. We start in a 3-3, get the ball rotating. Stevens thought about it. Leo right on the doorstep. And Michael Leo puts it past Tully and Syracuse already with a 4-0 lead, and this is what you expect from the high-powered Syracuse offense. And just move it around the outside, find it at the base. Here we go, looks through. Cornell defense just lost track of him. And Rice is able to convert. They'll still have some time on the extra man. 47 seconds still to go. So this is a, you know, for Cornell, this is a critical face-off. This face-off will come up after the break because Syracuse is absolutely on fire to start this game between the orange and the big red. Four nothing, Cuse on top here at Shokoff Field. A man up face off opportunity coming up for Syracuse and for Mason Cohn. The key cr crucial face off early on in this game and a free Jake Stevens on the wing with no Cornell player on the opposite end of challenge him will secure this face off and give Syracuse at least another 30 or so seconds on six on five offense. Syracuse already with one man up a goal on the one minute unreleasable from Brendan Staub. Stevens thought about firing. Oh, and Hiltz thought about firing as well. As this ball is still unsettled. Nice save on the behind the back shot there inside. Doing a good job of coming out and stopping Finn Thompson with the shot. 14 seconds left on the man up. A second save for Tully on the day. 10 seconds. Hiltz thought about it. Five seconds. Joey Spolina has hands free, and you can't give Joey Spolina hands free. It this, is a 5 nothing lead early on for the Qs. Yeah, and this is about the worst start you could, you could ever expect if you were Cornell. Syracuse has really come out and given Cornell everything they can, more than they can handle at this point. And There's they're, technically still man up here for another yeah. two seconds. Cornell's just got to try and get a possession and give their defense a little bit of a break. And there's a reason why Joey Spolina has that number 22 jersey on his back. Of April 22, and he's got 26 goals on the year. One more face up with man up, and it gives a free, free opportunity here for Sam English. Taken to the ground, though, but picked up by Billy Dwan. And so Syracuse, once again, this is where Syracuse holds the, one of the big advantages over Cornell in the face-off department. Mason Cohn's been absolutely on fire the entire year. 
And Harry Orange looking to even put on some more pressure. Spolina gets to the Hilts, and it just pushes it wide. Two Cor goals already for Hilts. Cornell played it straight up there, did not, did not send anybody. So that kept them a little closer to Hilts. And Thompson will initiate behind X. Short stick on Christian Moule. Moule thinks about taking box cage. And now Fawn Thompson had his defender hang, hung up and it looked like a cutting ball couldn't quite find its target. Picked up by Leo. Leo. Spelina got his defender yeah. hung here. Singer is hung up against Spelina. And the shot in front of Cajun, it just squeaks past Tully. Finn Thompson's on the board. 6-0 Syracuse early on. And the Orange are putting on an absolute click here at Ithaca. And it's just, I, I don't know what happened here. He just, just a little turn, right? There was nothing complicated. There was no pick. They're just taking advantage of the matchup against the short stick. And that's been an area that Cornell has struggled lately. That, um, you know, midfield has been where people have been attacking them. Yeah, especially short stick midfield where depth has been such a key, key factor in terms of not having players available. No Michael Bozzi, no Brian Lucci, no Chris Davis. As a second straight face-off, a second face-off violation of the quarter will go against Syracuse. This one against John Mullen. Mark Silas will stay on the field. Thought about going to cage, slipped on the slick turf that's still kind of slick because of the rain. A long possession there for Silas to keep Mullen on the field. Now I think if you're Cornell, you're coming back with your first midfield group. Make sure you got your personnel right. And just make sure you get a good quality scoring opportunity here. Yeah, that's Syracuse has done a nice job of not letting Cornell get inside at all. And a ball comes loose. Kirsten Long trying to fight for it. Figueres shuffles it back and eventually it goes back to the orange. Syracuse playing with so much tempo right now, offensively and defensively. And in transition, Syracuse has been absolutely excellent as well. However, English can't quite find it. Between the legs shot! That's a score for Billy Tuan! It is seven nothing Syracuse on a highlight reel shot from Tuan. And I tell you, everything is going Syracuse's way right now. They got out in transition here and the ball just kind of ends up up in the air Wait for the, this is Cornell knowing they got to yeah. try and stop the bleeding here. Takes their timeout. Ooh. Just been, you know, has Cornell all on their heels right now. And I think if, if you're the big red, this is just like everybody, let's just take a deep breath. Let's get the next goal and realize that we're not going to score a 28. There's no such thing as a 28, uh, yeah. you know, a, a, a seven-point goal. Well, but the advantage here, yeah. a face-off violation, third of the half on Syracuse. So Cornell will have an extra man opportunity. So hopefully for them, they can be able to stop the bleeding here and stop the run. It'll also be interesting to see the rotated defensive unit coming out for Syracuse as well. Syracuse changes its entire defense for a man down. Totally and unique. I'm basically zone specialists, guys who are experts at playing zone where the regular defense out there are obviously, as we've seen already, experts at highly aggressive man-to-man. -man. Well, and if you look at their, their man-down group, they're all long guys, right? Big sticks cover those passing lanes. Big opportunity here for Cornell and the 30-second man up to try and get something on the cage. Well, in Firth, up top. Kirsch thought about a shot from a difficult angle. Into Rory Graham. That one just hit the far pipe. How did that not go in for Rory Graham? Michael Long does pick it up on the backup, though. We're at back at full strength. And the defender, Carter Rice, comes in as the extra man to return to man-on-man -man action. Full strength, six on six. Cornell had Michael Long on the backside for a second there. They're just unable to get it through to him. Curse gets around his defender. CJ Curse clobbered on the way in. And he's going to be called on the crease. Yeah, absolutely. He he went up in the air. I think he decided I've got to take, you know, try and take things into my own hands here. And, and, an, and, and then goes yeah. into the crease. Also impressive from the man down. You'd however failed clear. It's going to go the way of Cornell. Again, this is going to be the equalizing factor for Cornell. If they can get the ride going, get a steal an extra couple of possession. That's the first failed clear of the day. 
It also keeps that man down unit out there as well to play some extended possession. Man-to-man -man defense is not the specialty of this man down unit. As Aiden Blake gets absolutely shoved to the ground, but slides the ball over to Kirst. Long behind X against Jordan Beck. Second midfield is out for Cornell. Jeanne took his defender back. Here's Long against Rice. On the shorty here. Michael Long tried to oh, shot from a difficult angle. No backup either. Is Cornell going to get the lucky first backup? I, yeah. I think they may have. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I think that could have easily been goalie ball. Yeah, it looked like Mark was going to be the closest one there. Luckily, it's Andrew Dalton for Cornell, at least if you're a big Red fan who gets the backup first. But, yeah, that definitely looked like Will Mark was a little bit closer. 15 to shoot here for Cornell. Initiating with Curse. Curse gets around his defender. And Curse yeah. gets shoved to the ground. Flag flies. That's on Billy Dwan. That's going to be a push with possession. Only five seconds on the shot clock. Curse trying to move quickly. CJ Curse gets the bouncer and passed Will Mark. And that's the first goal of the game. It comes from the ever prolific CJ Curse. You know, you just sense that he wants to try and put the team on his shoulders right here. And, and here's an opportunity, right? Here he comes. He forces the push. And then he takes his time. He's patient. He knows he's not got much time here on the clock and just goes right to his strong left hand, keeps coming, gives himself that extra step to greatness, and converts first of the game for him, stops the run at seven in a row. That will wipe out the penalty, so we'll be back to all even. Full strength for this upcoming faceoff. Again, Syracuse, three faceoff violations in this quarter alone. That is one way you can neutralize the faceoff game. But Angela Petrakis can't quite get the faceoff win. It's Jake Stevens who does so for the Orange. And he'll settle things down as the rotation comes in for Syracuse. Stevens, one of two transfers from Princeton, so guys that Cornell are familiar with, both playing in the midfield. Sam Anguish, the other transfer from Princeton, scored the first goal of the game in what seems like an eternity go. After Syracuse opened the game on a seven-goal run. But remember, Cor Cornell is no stranger from coming back from deep, deep runs. You recall the Princeton game a couple of weeks ago. I mean, Cornell was up 8-2 at one point. And then went down 12-8. Owen Hiltz and a good save from Tully, who's starting to settle into the game a bit more. And almost a, a good outlet to Matt Dooley. And eventually, Cornell gets the clear over as Kyle Smith picks up the ground ball. And a risky pass over to Curse on the yeah. near sideline. There's a lot of air under that yeah. one. Billy Dwan's big long pole almost grabbed that one out of thin air. That's also been a key of Cornell's success as well. You know, sometimes the clears are a little bit more risky than you would like to take it. Spencer Wertheim finds himself on the short stick huddle. Cornell's still changing, so Syracuse able to slide and not have any worries. Kelleher all the way up top against Wright. Firth. Firth now has the long... Uh, the short stick matchup. Wertheim spins around. Spencer Wertheim had hands free against the short stick, but his shot went well high. Now we'll play a little two-man game behind. Goldstein passes up top to Firth. Wearing the fabled 51 jersey that Jeff Teat made famous with the big red. And now Michael Long's got the short stick at Hoddle. He'll take him behind X. Michael Long on the short stick will score. And now the bleeding stops a little bit for Cornell. And at the end of the first quarter, you sense that this is huge for the Big Red to gain some momentum back in this game. He just takes advantage of the matchup here, right? Gets it behind. He's able to come with his left hand. Almost, a, almost was a little bit of a fake pass. Like there was that little second of a hitch there that uh, made the defender not slide to him. And then he's able to get turn the corner and put the high percentage shot in. Yeah, I always think of goals in the last minute of a quarter can really help you build momentum. You never want to give one up, and if you can get one, you know, that's great. And it looks like we've got a foul. There is some sort of foul being called because there is not going to be a face-off, it looks like. But here it is, so they just threw the flag now. 
There's an unsportsmanlike penalty that's been called on Syracuse. We're not sure exactly on who. It's got to be some sort of bench penalty, it looks like. Well, and if you're Cornell, with 15 seconds left and the faceoff disparity, you, you maybe think about holding. Oh, the ball. Uh, hold on, Tom, because it sounds like we're getting two unsportsmanlike penalties potentially getting called. Officials are getting come together. Could this be a six on four getting set up for Cornell? Certainly could be. It, lo it looks like it. Well, they've got five out there. Now, the thing to remember, they could, they could call two of them on the same guy. This perhaps. is very true, yes. We'll wait to hear from our little bit of confusion. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait to hear from the out. admins downstairs in our, in our production booth exactly what the penalties are going to be called. As you can see, the official talking with Kagari Gate. Coach John Ordina, also the defensive coordinator, having a chat as well. At the very least, this is going to be a huge man up opportunity. As you said, you probably expect Cornell to probably take this into the second half. I, I, I would. I would wait and hold the ball. You know, especially, you know it's at least one of them's a minute, right? So, Excuse me, also into the second yeah. quarter, not the second yeah. half. Yeah. That'd be some, <laughs> some non-releasable yeah. penalty. <laughs> a 15-minute non-releasable penalty. Yeah, love, with the time left, 15 and change. Yeah. So we'll get, they'll get this all straightened out. So right, like. so right now it is going to stay on six on five, and it looks like it's Carter Rice, at least on that near side, who is getting called for this penalty. You see Pat March there in the orange hat on your left having conversations with the officials. It might have been called on Pat March, the offensive coordinator. See some other Cuse officials. Did Pat March get tossed oh. out of this game? Sure looking like, well... Looks like somebody's walking away, yeah. Is that? It looks like that's Pat March, the offensive coordinator. We'll see if we get a confirmation of this. I tell you, in, in all the years I've been doing these Cornell games for 20 some odd years, I can never remember uh, a situation where a coach was removed from the game. This definitely seems like well, the penalty was called on the offensive coordinator, Pat March, there in the orange hat on the right. At least that's who it looks like, at least from my angle. Either that or it's a different staff member, but otherwise, no matter what this is, you can see so many players here on this Syracuse sideline are still arguing with the officials about what exactly the call is. And, and I there was there was nothing... Huge what we're just getting here from the production booth. There was one one-minute penalty being called and a three-minute penalty being called. So Syracuse is going to go down four on six for at least the next minute, and then we'll go six on five for the next three. Yeah, and we'll have to see which, what's unreleasable and what is not. I would expect that the three-minute one is. But this is a huge momentum swing coming the way of Cornell. Oh, boy. I mean... You take a year off from Syracuse Cornell and it gets chippy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not. Uh... All right, so we're getting word that both of these penalties are non-releasable. This is two men up for a minute, and then we'll go one man up for an additional two minutes. Yeah, this is, and this is where <laughs> I think you, you you hold, you hold because you got so much time, and then you're going to take the opportunity to start the second ha second quarter without a faceoff. A huge opportunity for Connor Busek coming up to draw up something with two men up for 45 seconds to start the second quarter. It, it looked interesting for Syracuse early on, going on a blistering seven goal run, but two goals for Cornell to end the quarter and a two man advantage coming up for the Big Red to start quarter number two when we come back here on ESPN+. Plus. to fill you in if you just joined us here on ESPN Plus. Boy, did you miss a doozy of a first quarter between Cornell and Syracuse. Syracuse started on a 7-0 run. However, the, or, the Cornell Big Red have battled back with two goals at the end of the, second, of the first quarter. And in addition, Syracuse offensive coordinator Pat March has been ejected from this game due to unsportsmanlike conduct. A one-minute penalty and a three-minute penalty, both unreleasable, have been called at the end of the first quarter with 15 seconds left. 
which means Cornell will have 45 seconds of six on four and then an additional two minutes of six on five. That's how we start quarter two. Yeah, and that's and that's a big opportunity here for Cornell. Again, I mentioned you can't score multi-point goals in college lacrosse, but you can certainly take advantage of a long extra man here. A huge momentum swing both ways. And it makes, obviously, if a Cornell goal comes quickly, and it will, as CJ Kirsch got absolutely flattened on that shot attempt. Now it's now 7-3, and what I was going to say is, now that because this Cornell comes quickly, a lot's riding on Mason Cohn to win this faceoff clearly for Syracuse. Yep. Because he has no wing help. Yeah, and Cornell just is able to, to move this through. And actually, um, you know, you, you look at this opportunity, it also puts them in a place um, where they've got to, you know, think about their faceoff guy needing to perhaps have to stay on for a man down. Again, this is unreleasable, so it... It seems interesting. Yeah, they're Again, pulling, that, yeah, they're pulling yeah. him off right now. The guy came out because of being unreleasable. Mason Cohn's all by himself to take this face off. He might not have a more important face off this entire year. He's got to win this cleanie to himself. And this is going the other way after an off ball hold. Mason Cohn gets this face off win. And now this is going to be a huge ride coming up for Cornell to try and battle back. It will eventually get to be on six on five, which means the ball's got to be doubled. Yep, and, and this is where you do have to, I mean, everyone thinks it's so easy to get that double there, but when you're all spread out like this, you know, it, it's, it's not totally easy. And then here's an opportunity. Did they call a timeout? Yes, they did. It looks like it. So Syracuse decides to, to use their timeout. Michael Leo will initiate from the far sideline here being doubled by Jack Follows and Jason Singer as Syracuse tries to out, out of bounds. bounds. Again, the blue line is the out of bounds in men's lacrosse. The yellow line is the out of bounds in women's lacrosse. So Leo must have not noticed yep. that. He he came, it was clear as day. We were able to, good job by the camera crew to get that and Cornell look for the quick clear, get their extra man unit on. Remember, this is an unreleasable penalty. So this is gonna go on for the next minute 40. This six on five advantage for Cornell. And you want to be get into your set quickly here. Starting looks look like it's a one four one. Wong. Up top to Kelher. Kirst. Gets it back. Wong. Will rotate up top. Forty on the shot clock for Cornell. That was the same action they got the last extra man goal on. Long thought about a rip from deep. Here's Willem Firth. Cornell staying patient here. 26 on the shot clock. They can wind this down again because of the non-releasable penalty. Kirst finds Long in the middle, and Michael Long makes it four straight goals for Cornell. Nice patience there by Michael Long. He catches it and changes hands. Watches this how he's sort of coming to the ball a little bit with his right hand. No, left, he switches left and then goes to right. That change of hand then shoots down low to get another Cornell extra man goal, assist to CJ Kirst. And they still have 47 seconds left on the extra man. And the big thing also, it's all with this specialized Q's man down unit defense out on the field as well. There's no Riley Figueres, there's no Billy Dwan, there's no Caden Cole. And a violation. the track is yeah. jumped. And again, this is where those face-offs become so important for Syracuse. This time it's John Mullen winning the face-off. Remember, he only has one wing help on these face-offs for the next at least 40 seconds if it continues. And once again, Syracuse, at least if they could hold on to the ball here, should be able to kill off the rest of this man down penalty. It looks like we're starting to get some rain. The rain is indeed starting to fall. Owen Hiltz is backtracking, getting chased by Matt Dooley. Not, no doubles quite yet here coming from Cornell. Now you're seeing Singer, excuse me, you're seeing Follows and Dooley, who was doubling Hiltz. You've got Jack Parker's also come in at short stick, D midi. See number 24 near the middle in the top of your screen there initially. 
And the penalty is now released. We're at full strength. Those were two unsportsmanlike penalties. And I think Syracuse can be happy to come away with only Cornell scoring two goals from those penalties. I, I think, I think if, yeah, you could say that. I think if you're Cornell, you're happy to you get the two. And you think, does this maybe just slow the tempo down in this game, which I think is what Cornell would like most ultimately. Joey oh, Spolina! <laughs> oh, Joey Spolina! The stick skills of number 22 on display once again. Just, just gets his almost like a post-up situation, right? He comes on, he comes on, and he just gets to this point. He waits, he waits, he waits, and then pulls it behind the back with his right hand. Stops the Cornell run at three and at, at four in a row, excuse me, um, which makes that you know a good opportunity for Syracuse to sort of settle things in, you know, sort of say, oh well, now that we're past that uh, you know man down, now we're just going to get back to the way we were playing before. Three points now for Joey Spolina. Two goals and an assist for number 22. And on the first full strength faceoff in quite some time, it's Mason Cohn who comes up victorious, but can't quite get the pass cleanly to Samalexo. Alexo being hounded by Petrakis gets absolutely crushed Flag by down. Singer. And this will be a man up opportunity coming for Syracuse, but it won't come because it's Mason Cohn on the faceoff once again. That is six goals for Mason Cohn, who absolutely gets the orange bench fired up. And that's one you don't want to give up. You don't ever want to give up a, a, a goal to a faceoff guy. Cornell with the good, the good ride. I thought that was a legal hit by Singer, but there was a flag down, and here it is. The faceoff guy steps in, and he's able to convert that. Cohn, you know, he, he takes advantage of it. He's you know had to work by himself, and there he did a good job getting the ball out. And, of course, the thing with Mason Cohn is he's not just a faceoff guy. He had to play a lot of midfield at Tufts, the previous school he was at before transferring to Syracuse. And one of those big finds in the transfer portal for Gary Gate in the past offseason. Number of transfers here for Syracuse playing big roles, especially in the specialty um, positions. So we're still going to have the... The, the officials are talking to confirm what we have as the call here. We expect it's an illegal body check. And Jason Singer is staying in the penalty box, so it looks like what we'll either get is either a three on two faceoff or a immediate just faceoff win for Syracuse. And you see there on the left side of your screen, that was the check by Singer that drew the you know, flag and the eventual goal. I have to say, I'm all for player safety here. It's really important, but... One of the, the comments in the lacrosse world right now is if that oftentimes big hits that are pretty clean are getting called as illegal body checks. To me, his arms were down. Um, he hit him straight from the front. Um, the ball was still in the area. I, I think that's a tough call. To me, that, that's a lacrosse play. If you look at this again, right? He comes through, right? Arms are down low. It's the shoulder. It didn't come head to head. He didn't lower the head. To me, that looks like a good hit. And, and this is not, you know, I, I, you see it sort of happening here and there. And they're calling it an a, a un, unreleasable penalty as well. The call is going to be unnecessary roughness against Jason Singer, number 43. And that should give the ball just straight over to Syracuse, most likely. No, we'll have a face off because it was not a dead ball play. Oh, yeah, true. Yep. Well, also, yeah, Joey Spolin is taking a knee because he's also getting us unsportsmanlike as well. Well, and I tell you, the the um, the bench for Syracuse came quite a bit on yeah. the field, and you could see the official trying to push them push them back. So, what are we going to get here? Are we going to? It looks like from the officials are going to give this Syracuse ball. This should be five on five, if I'm reading this correct. As it, that's what it looks like we're getting. It looks like we're going to get five on five. So, but minute. why? I'm surprised. So we're also getting getting word that we've also got an unsportsmanlike conduct here, penalty against Cornell, which it's is why you're seeing oh, no so face off. Because right now it's actually five on four. So Cornell is going to go down five on four. I think no, it is going to be five on five. I think. <laughs> With the chirpiness of this game, I mean, we've already seen four yeah. unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Five on five lacrosse. <laughs> so 
So Jason Singer. So they called it a two-minute yeah. foul against Singer. And then one minute on Spolina for on Sportsman like That's why you see Jackson Burke whistle just kind of hanging around there at the back to wait for this one-minute five-on-four to expire. Or five-on-five five to expire, excuse me, so that they can go six-on-five for a minute. I, that's surprising. I, I would go here, right? Why not go? It's a, it's a two-minute foul. And uh, it's unreleasable it's, as well. We saw an unreleasable get um, signaled by the official. So they're just going to yeah. run it out they're here. Gonna, they're going to run out now, to five the, on five. But the problem is going to be they're going to they, the shot clock is still in play. So they've got 25 to shoot here. It doesn't matter when the, the penalty uh, expires. They're still going to have to get there a shot. There is the penalty expired. Now six on five for 20 seconds on the shot clock. And like you said, you got to get something on cage now. Owen Hills will be first. Into the middle for Finn Thompson. Can't get a shot off. There's only seven seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds. Owen Hill has to let one rip, and it's right into the stick of Matt Tully. And now Cornell can go down to kill the five-on-six penalty. And like you said, maybe Syracuse should have th thought about going five-on-five five to get something going, at least offensively. Now the question is, do you use a timeout here? Nope, but they were yeah. able to get a shorty open. Well, Coach Busek does have an additional timeout to his availability. So there's Spencer Wertheim on that far sideline. He'll yes. toss it off the curse. So, so th that, that strategically, I don't like that, right? First of all, you gave yourself only 20 to shoot, and you, you're able to let Cornell kill off the penalty if we if they got a possession. And how much of that is not having Pat March on the sideline trying to direct traffic? Remember, if for those of you who are just joining us, Pat March got ejected from this game towards the end of the first quarter for unsportsmanlike conduct. So the Syracuse is without their offensive coordinator on the sideline. DJ Kirst with 30 seconds left on the shot clock. So Cornell has killed off the unreleasable penalty on Singer. It's a 9-4 game as Hugh Keller, the hero in the last game these two teams played, bounces that one off a helmet or a body. 16 to shoot here for Cornell. Yeah, you know with this Cornell offense, it can move quickly. Here's Ryan Goldstein, the talented freshman. Ryan Goldstein can't quite fire it past. There's Long on blocked. the backup. Yeah, definitely got blocked. And it's looked like it's called getting blocked off Mark. So this is a you know, we've got fresh shot clocks all around. So they said it did hit the goalie. So Cornell gets a fresh 60. Wertheim inverting. Spencer Wertheim. Did that get past Mark? No goal. What a save from Will Mark. It'll be interesting to see if that gets reviewed. Oh, boy. Carter Rice gets it across the halfway line. But boy, we'll have we seen more weird things in this no. game so far? We, we're not even halfway through our second quarter yet. I mean, this is what happens when you take a year off Syracuse Cornell, huh? Yeah, they stored it all up. Yeah, decided to use it they stored off all the aggression that this I-81 rivalry battles with. Can you remember a more wild game here? You, you've called so many games here at Sholkoff Field. Boy, not like this. Defender hung up. We try to get, excuse me, I try to get our camera right. Tully, Tully's got out of cage. That's an aggressive move from Tully. He'll get back in. Here's Michael Leo, all the way up top against Aiden Blake. Slide comes. Christian Moulet. Owen Hills found a cutter, found a man inside, excuse me, but Finn Thompson took his eyes off the ball right when he received it and couldn't quite push it on cage. Here's Cornell in transition. Michael Long, all the way to Aiden Blake. Ben Thompson's caught out on defense. Goldstein all the way up top. Brendan Stop. Brendan Stop. The bouncer. Brendan Stop at the long ball goal. And I tell you, the thing that has happened and changed this game is that this tempo is more to Cornell's liking. It's not that Cornell wants to play slow, but they don't want to necessarily be all unsettled situations here. You're happy to take, you know, a numbers game and go to the goal there. And that's, you know, let Cornell sort of start to work their way back into this game. That's the fourth goal of the career for Brendan Staub, the sophomore from Garden City, New York, has made this a 9-5 game. It's rare to see Will Mark let a ball like that pass his cage. But boy, have there been momentum swings and momentum swings in this game. Yeah, both goalies only have four, each goalie has four saves in this game. And a face-off win for Silos here. Working up against John Mullen. Silos tried to find Michael Long, but couldn't quite do so off well, the top of Long's stick. And yeah, just going the other way. That's one Long wants back. He, he sort of reacted very quickly. But again, this lets Cornell get into their riding game. Uh, the, you know, if, if 
Syracuse has to set clear out of a settled situation. It looks very different than if it's, you know, ground ball up and out. They will get the clear, though, over to Jake Stevens. But like we said, clearing can be a factor in this game with teams only clearing 81.5% against Cornell this season. That's not a particularly high number for defenses. Owen Hiltz, oh, Owen Hiltz, the fast hands makes it a 10-5 lead for Syracuse. And that's one I think Matt Tully would like back. Um, can't let, like to see here if, if there was a, a screen that came in front of him because it, it looked to me like it wasn't a super hard shot. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure he saw it. There was a, a lot of, in front of him no, there. Sea of white bodies in front of Matt Tully, kind of like a hockey goal when you know it gets deflected and screened on the way in. But Owen Hiltz taking huge advantage of that to get his hat trick. It's a five point game already for Owen Hiltz. And that's, a you know, again, you, you, you stop Cornell from getting momentum. You think Cornell gets a goal and then they win a face off and then Syracuse able to come down and get possession. And a huge ground ball pick up there from Michael Long. Flags flag want down. to be flown and yeah, there, here comes a flag as Michael Long will draw the penalty. And we'll go on six on five once again. And it, it, special teams were probably going to be a factor. Did you, did you expect this to be much of a factor yeah, today? It's it's crazy. <laughs> I, like I, I was just thinking that that you almost would need to put like guard, you know, handrails in the in the <laughs> box, you know, that you might use just for something to hold on to. Uh, both of us standing while we're <laughs> watching this game, it's like every forty five seconds something yeah. crazy happens. So Cornell will go on the extra man here. Uh, they are two for five on the night. And again, here comes this specialty platoon man down unit that comes out for Syracuse. It's important for Cornell. They got to continue to try and chip this lead down. They had it down to three. Now it's up to five again. Still plenty of time in this lacrosse game. Long found Willem Firth and a great save from Will Mark. Just high to high. And Mark found that stick side all the way. And now it's time to clear for man down for Syracuse. And with Sam Anguish on the ball, they can do just that. We're all even. And for the first time in probably quite some time, chance for everyone in the stadium to take a breath. Yeah, and, and again, like, I do think, now obviously you don't want to be 10 to 5, but this game has gotten more to Cornell's liking in terms of the pace of play. And you saw it in the first half. The ball was zipping around for Syracuse. Yeah. It's definitely slowing down as Luke Roa will battle against Hugh Kelleher, who's been caught out on defense. 27 on the shot clock. Up top to Jackson Burke whistle. And the short sticks matchups are what every team has tried to attack against Cornell. And now Jake Stevens will fast it off. A free shot for Luke Roa, who was all alone. And now it's an 11-5 lead for Syracuse. Yeah, sort of a, a not an, a great angle, but he's got so much space there. And he, you know, when I watched it live, it seemed like he was a little further from the cage. He was in a dangerous position on the field there. Uh, no, no question there. You try and blow it past the goaltender from that spot. Um, the slide came a little bit too late from Brendan Staub after the initial slide onto Jake Stevens. And a great assist there for Jake Stevens, who's got two assists on the game. Try to make it three as Mark Silos tries to get it past Mullen. And excuse me, he tries to get it past Cohn. And a violation will give it to Cornell. What do we got here? Another whistle. Officials want to converse here. This might have been I a, a player stepping outside of the restraining box on the initial faceoff. As all three of the officials will converse here. It looks like it's going to stay with Cornell on this side. As one of the officials had, goes to the Syracuse coaching box to have a conversation. Had with more them. conferences today <laughs> than like in an elementary school off day where you meet yeah. with your parent teacher. Conference. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. Coming in at 8 p.m. on your elementary school night to have a parent-teacher conference. Yeah. And the kids love those because then they get a day off from school. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what Cornell has right now, the Cornell students on spring break. Here's A.J. Nikolic. 
Nikolic went all alone to KJJ. Nikolic flags fly. No. Goal should stand. And yes, the goal does stand for AJ Nikolic. Now the question is, what's the foul going to be? Could very easily be a push from behind. And that should institute an immediate man up for Cornell, if I recall correctly. Now let's see. No, it's probably going to be a push from behind, which would be a 30-second technical foul, which will get wiped out by the goal. That's what I would expect it to be. Now, the question is, did they call it yes, the, they the hit coming in later? No, the foul was, in, yeah, so we're going to, it's, uh, this will wipe out. It's a 30-second technical foul. It gets wiped out by the Cornell goal. So it goes so back to a five-goal advantage for for Syracuse. Nikolic really really come on in the last, yeah. you know, four or five games for Cornell. He started this year on the third midfield line, but due to the injuries and other factors, has made his way onto the second midfield line and has really taken that opportunity in stride. Jake Stevens wants a one-man goal all by himself. He'll back things off. Well, and once again, just another time to catch our breaths. Is, like you said, Syracuse has really slowed down this pace in the second quarter. Now, part of that is because Cornell's converting on the offensive end. They can't get out into the break. Anguish thought about ripping one, decided to back up. Spolina around GLE with one hand. That's always so dangerous. Spolina right into the middle. He found Finn Thompson. Wow, that's a nice shot. Um, a, a good look. It seemed to me like he, he caught that very quickly and was able to put it in. Didn't have a ton of angle, but it all happened so quickly. Watch how Spolina comes back and just looks inside really quickly. That's a really nice goal by Finn Thompson. And there goes to show off the amount of box lacrosse experience that so many of these Syracuse players have on this team. Finn Thompson from Toronto definitely grew up with that box lacrosse experience. You need to have those quick stick skills in front of goal in order to score goals like that. And a nice job by Spolina being patient behind the goal. He got to a place he wanted and he came right back. And John Mullen picks off the face-off win. That's the thing with Syracuse this year. I mean, Syracuse has had face-off problems in the past, and now they not only have one, but two very, very capable face-off guys who you can rely on more than 50% of time to pick off a face-off victory. It's been so key for Syracuse to have such consistent face-offs and a big reason why they have returned to the places they want to return to. And a nice job by them of doing that when they've had the violations early. Christian Mule pushes that shot wide. For most of this quarter, if they had a, if they jumped early, it would have been a, a Cornell possession uh, and a penalty. Face-offs right now with 10 face-off wins for Syracuse, seven face-off wins for Cornell. Selena found Mule all the way up top. Owen oh, Hiltz, that one deflected off, I think, the helmet of Kyle Smith. I don't think I want to stand in too many front in front of too many shots against Owen Hiltz. This is dangerous, though. Mule with the short stick. Luke Gilmartin. So one of the most prolific attackers. As Michael Leo will fire that shot low and past Matt Tully. Oh wait, this did this goal get wiped out? This goal might have gotten wiped out. I'm not sure exactly. They're, hold on everything right now. Nope. You can see the, the, Leo just kind of turn his head back in some confusion. The referee at the table just signaled the goal. Okay, so this will be a good goal for Michael Leo. There definitely seemed to be a lot of confusion there on, the, on that end. But another goal here for Michael Leo. That's his second of the game. And it's probably a... It, what it sounds like it's going to be is probably unsportsmanlike on Leo. And no face-off going the way of Cornell. Okay, so unsportsmanlike uh, counter. It's like we're at five now. Cornell will start with the man up here. No, it's all even. It's all even. No, we, I, I, yeah, we, I have no idea what's happening here. Me neither. When's the last time you've seen an even strength no face-off uh, needed as whistles fly. Cornell, uh, Cornell will take out. a second and final timeout of the half. 
you got to get a stop because Syracuse scored seven in the opening quarter. They've scored six in this quarter, and, and Syracuse's defense is excellent. So you've got to start chipping away and start getting stops at the defense of them because Syracuse just keeps scoring and scoring and scoring. Cornell's probably already run out of time. And Syracuse's defense much improved a oh, big reason because of John Odierna coming over from Manhattan to quarterback that defense as the defensive coordinator this season. An opportunity to stop the bleeding here for Cornell. Two will run for Syracuse so far. Michael Long will fire this over the shoulder of Will Mark. And Long just that that whole offensive set just seemed like he was he was ready to try and go to the goal and have an opportunity. Here he gets rid of the ball, sort of a little bit of action, come right back to him, and just blows it by Mark. They give Spencer Wertheim an assist on that one. And again, can Cornell get a face-off win here to try and put a run together? Again, Syracuse, with the number of face-off violations, has to be careful. Yeah, remember, Syracuse, any more face-off face face violations in this half will result in man-up opportunities. But a uh, nifty behind the back pass from Hiltz. But that one was stuffed at the doorstep by Tully. Boy. This Syracuse team is so, so creative offensively. Well, that's always been the trademark. Probably going all the way back to when Gary Gate was on the field in the late 80s, early 90s. Gary Gate now in his third season coaching the men of Syracuse after a very, very successful career with the ladies as their head tenure. Spencer Wertheim pushes that past Mark. Now it's a two goal run for Cornell. And here we go, back and forth, back and forth. This has been the story of Cornell's season all year long. Going on runs, stopping runs, And just a little, a little hidden ball trick that fooled no one. Um, but he comes down, gets into a good spot on the field where he likes to shoot with that left-handed shot. But the big thing about that hidden ball trick, that or fake hidden ball trick, whatever you want to call it, it forced the short stick wide huddle to hustle all the way over to Wertheim to try and cover him. And the faceoffs continue to be so, so important for both teams. Zylos back there out against Cone, and again, Cone wins it cleanly. And now the Orange looking to move fast. They do, as Sam English will make it a 14 8 game. And again, Sam English loves scoring against Cornell. Boy, we don't get much chance to breathe in here. And just a, a really nice face-off win there by Cone. And he gets it out of his stick really quickly. English going right onto the offensive end of the field and just puts the bouncer past Tully. This seems like Cornell gets a couple steps going in the right direction. And then Syracuse ready to answer, not letting Cornell put too long of a run together. And a flag is going to fly. This probably is going to go against Silos for some sort of violation. And Cornell now has to go on man down. That's a hold getting called against Silos. That's gonna be a 30 second technical. Take a look at it again here. Yeah, kind of just shoved Mullen to the ground. Syracuse two for three with the extra man here. One of the highlights of this Syracuse team there Absolutely lethal man up unit. Joey Spolina tried to rip one over the bar. Cornell penalty to number three, Mark Silos. 30 second face off violation for holding. Still 21 seconds on the man up, so plenty of time for Syracuse to get another look. Spolina all the way up top. Hilt, great dodge. Oh, and Hilt pushed it wide. Just slipped past the defender, just again. You can see that box background there, just sort of just keeping the stick. You know, keeps it in his left hand, but that doesn't matter to him. Burk whistle will trigger. Here's Leo. Hiltz getting absolutely hounded. Pass wayward intended for Thompson. And, back. and the over and back will give the ball right to the big red, and that will kill off the rest of the penalty. Long will reinitiate, and a slash is going to get called. It may have even been offsides, too. And Long absolutely <laughs> destroyed as he gets on his way to goal. We got two flags down. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> and again, this is another one of how much laundry have you seen on the floor today? 
So this was right here by the middle. It throws a little wrap check here. Yeah, that's caught on Thompson. You can see Long immediately noticed it. And see what the officials have to call here. I mean, to me, I'm not sure I saw what was wrong with that. Now, the only thing I saw was, you know, not giving the guy five yards. But at the very least, it's a 30-second man up. 30-second technical for interference. So the call was a 30-second technical for interference, and C.J. Kirst will put Cornell back on the board. It's 14-5. Extra man Excuse goal. Excuse me, 14-9. Five-goal lead for Cornell. Extra man goal here for Cornell. Just They start with Kirst, top center. They get the ball moving around, and he just comes right through the middle. You know, it wasn't anything real, real complicated there. Um, just, you know, makes a cut to the ball, and Long finds him. You know, in some games this season, 14-9 would be the final score. Yeah. And we haven't played 30 minutes here at Chokoff Field yet. Yeah, well, certainly plenty of offense here. <laughs> the, poor, the poor goalies, I, I mean. This is what we expected, right? Offense on offense on offense. And another crucial faceoff coming. Ball still up for grabs, and it looks like Sam Alexo might be the first one to it. And he is indeed trying to ward off Silos. And eventually gets the ball over to Riley Figueres with under a minute to go here in the second quarter. And Syracuse looking to move quickly, but the pass was a little bit too far for Stevens. And now Cornell will try her own risky pass, and it somehow finds C.J. Kirst. Now Cornell looking to move a transition. Michael Long will pass it off. Here is Spitzer worth time! And I tell you, I, you, may, you may not have been able to he hear it, but I... I thought that C.J. Curse was going to get killed. That <laughs> type of a buddy pass. And then watch this. I mean, Curse just looks like he is going to get lit up. He's able to make the catch. He finds Michael Long, who just takes time, makes the defender have to make a decision to stop him with the ball, finds Wertheim, who puts it into the goal, gets Cornell two in a row here, gets this down to a four-goal Syracuse lead. And that's the advantage of having a healthy Michael Long, the lacrosse IQ is so off the charts. Only played in seven games last year due to injury. He now has six points, three goals, and three assists. However, John Mullen wins this faceoff. Under 30 left to go. And Coach Gary Gates got to call a timeout and use one of his two remaining timeouts of the half. Syracuse has called the timeout. They used the one. They, no, that's their last one. I believe they used the other one on that oh, extra yes, man right, when they, they were did. trying to kill time. Is that what they did at the start of the second quarter. So this is a, it's been an offensive explosion. You know, if you look at Syracuse on the year, is only giving up 9.25 goals a game. That was the one of the differentiators, yeah. I thought, in this game was, you know, Syracuse's defense has been excellent. Cornell has not been as good. Especially on after the year. that 10-4 game against Duke earlier, this, uh, earlier a couple month, uh, weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, so now if you're Cornell, you got to buckle things up and, and try and get a stop here. Yeah, they're going aggressive here to try and buckle things up. 17 seconds left. Spolina got around next, tried to behind the back pass. Christian Moule, that shot's over to bar. Finn Thompson's first on the backup. It's a good look there by Spolina and Moule with a good opportunity from right in front of the cage. 10.6 seconds to go here. It's going to have to be a quick hitter. Plenty of time, though, for Spolina. Gets a screen. Found Moule. That one was deflected on the way in. Went off either Gil Martin or Aiden Blake. It and, looked like it went off Aiden Blake. And I don't know how Cornell does not have him covered here as a cheap Matt by Tully. Tully? Yeah, Matt Tully will just send it long. It won't go on cage. And ha how have you, have you had a chance to breathe yet? I'm I was just going to sure. say. I'm I mean, not sure if anyone at home got a chance to breathe. 24 goals in the first half. 14-10 would be a final score in most games this year at college lacrosse. That is just the first half here. And there's still a little bit of talking going on between these two teams as they get ready to go to halftime. I think we just going to need a few minutes to sort of uh, get our bearings and be ready to go, you know, because, you know, either one of these teams, if they get on a run in the second half, could do it. You know, four goals, you know, is, is not a lot considering that Syracuse had the first seven goals of this game. Grab a friend, grab a drink. The second half between Syracuse and Cornell, the return to this I-81 rivalry will be coming up after our, these short messages because Syracuse and Cornell have a 14-10 game going between these two heated Central New York rivals. And we do have a goaltender change. So Wyatt Nust, he started the beginning of this season for Cornell, and then Matt Tully started 
the last several games for the Big Red. So here we go. It is Wyatt Nuss, number 19 in goal. To start off for Cornell here in the second half. The last time these two teams played, it was also Nuss who came in relief, or at least in the second quarter of the game, the last time these two teams played, he came in for Chase Erland. It only allowed eight goals, made eight saves in that 16-15 overtime win over Syracuse in the JMA Wireless Dome two years ago. Boy, that was close. CJ Kirst jumped up to try and um, stop that clearing pass and almost made himself offsides when he landed. He had to sort of balance, him, balance himself there. Hard fought ground ball off the face off. Michael Leo, head full of steam. Lost his defender and this is going the other way. Interference call? And, and yes, and indeed an interference call against Syracuse. And immediately the opening possession for the Orange is wasted here in the third quarter. As Aiden Blake takes it into the offensive end. Again, one of the advantages you have with Aiden Blake started the year on the second midfield line, now at short stick D midi, due to injury reasons for Cornell. DJ Kirst had to go through two long poles if he wanted to go towards goal, so backs off. Unsettled situation, at least for a second there for Cornell. No. Again, this is more of the tempo they want, so they decide if they don't have a real clean look, let's you know, set things up and see what we can do. Wertheim has Carter Rice on him, and so this is an opportunity for Wertheim to go behind Dex Ryan. Goldstein found Wilm Firth. Here's Goldstein high-stepping his way alongside Kalen Cole. Cole nice and patient. Goldstein all the way up top. He'll find Kelleher. Hugh Kelleher will push this shot wide, 23 on the shot clock. Just that's the power dodge that you expect to see there from Kelleher off the top. Goldstein directing traffic. Gets around Cole. Ryan Goldstein. Off the bar. Just That'll reset off the, bar. the shot clock. And Curse closest there. That's a fresh 60. Just a quick split dodge from behind. That's the type of dodge that Goldstein's been successful with so far. An assist for Ryan Goldstein. Only his, hard to believe, only his fourth career game with Cornell. CJ Kirst is shot over the bar. Still plenty of time for Cornell in this long, elongated possession on offense. Firth has picked up the short, excuse me, the long pole. Nope, they've actually changed, excuse me. Wertheim had the short stick and Spencer Wertheim, what a low save from Will Mark. And that's one of the X factors you get with Will Mark. He may only have six saves in this game, but that was one of the better ones. And almost a turnover forced by the Cornell ride, but Jake Stevens, a strong stick to keep it in his possession. And again, Cornell giving themselves the chance to ride that they didn't have a lot of early in this contest. Jack Wallace was there aggressively battling. Luke Roa on the invert against Charlie Box. Roa initiating. Stops on a dime. Gets the double. Rower now has some space, but will pass it back off. Burke Whistle. Here's Hiltz. Hiltz behind the back. Jackson Burke Whistle. What a save from Nust. In his first action, he picks up the save. That's a big one if you're Wyatt Nust to sort of get settled. Nice offensive movement there by Syracuse to create that high percentage shot. All the way up top now to CJ Kirst. Now you see if Cornell can do something here in the change game. This is Wyatt Nuss' first game action since that dreadful Cornell showing, it has to be said, against Penn State. It's been Matt Tully all the way ever since that Penn State game. Second midfield for Cornell. Feels like we haven't seen a lot of them tonight, and here's the turnover. Yeah, a slip there. I believe it's Stevens. A slip there from Nikolic. Here's Jake Stevens. Jake Stevens, that was deflected on the way in. It looked like by Muleg. An inadvertent uh, a miss and a off ball push should go the way of Cornell. And it indeed will as Mac Wright is called for the infraction. But not lucky there for Jake Stevens because it looked like Mule redirected the shot unwillingly. And that check coming out of the stick of Nickwick right there though was Andrew Dalton, luckily for Cornell. Yeah, just a little sloppy there. Cornell gets lucky. First against Duan. All the way 
up top. As Wertheim will set it to Nikowick. A little bit of a rotated midfield line here with Wertheim, the first midfielder, alongside the second midfielders, Dalton and Nikowick. Michael Long has the short stick against Jake Spelina. And he'll take Spelina for a ride. The two number ones do battle behind, behind Cage. Swin dodge. Long up top. Two players are waiting there. Wertheim is one of them. Spencer Wertheim shot over the cage. Still 26 to shoot, so plenty of time if you're Cornell. Ryan Goldstein waiting for the signal. No restart. Goldstein, speed. Found Michael Long somehow on the unsettled situation with sticks colliding everywhere, but Mark picks up the ground ball. And boy, the tempo has certainly slowed to a crawl here in the second half. I was going to say, this is probably about the longest we've gone in this game without a goal. I paused myself there because the Syracuse was about to go to yeah. the goal. Sam, Work their changes. Sam their English, offensive personnel. Yeah, Sam English back things off. First midfield trouts on for Syracuse. They've had the lion's share of the run for Syracuse in this game. Michael Leo's got the short stick Aiden Blake on him. Spelina has the singer matchup. Joey Spelina wearing the Fable 22. Joey Spelina! That is textbook Joey Spelina. A single one-on-one -on -one dodge against Jason Singer. And Syracuse re-extends their lead to five goals. Just a patient dodge, right? He waited, got what he wanted comes with his left hand, uses the pick, gets to five and five. You know, not bad defense. I mean, Singer's got the got his stick in his hands when he shoots that. You know, he got himself to a good spot on the field. That's the thing he did really well but, there. But sometimes that's what happens when Jody Spolina gets even an eight, a, a, a millimeter of space. His face off going away of Mason Cone. As Mason Cohn continues to have an excellent day on the face offs, but his pass over the head of Will Mark. That's going out of bounds, and a possession going the way of Syracuse. An uncharacteristic tone over there for Mason Cohn. Well, that's the thing, right? I mean, the face offs in this game, it's one thing to get the statistical face off win, but both teams have had times where they've had to work really hard just to maintain possession. First, met with blue jerseys. There's the first midfield trots out for Connor Busek. Firth has the short stick against Carter Rice. And had the ball checked out, Kelleher will pick it back up. Kelleher has drawn the long pull of Sam Alexo. Goldstein doubled there by Rice on a beautiful slide. And the path intended for Firth is off the mark. A beautiful slide there from Carter Rice. Just played him physical, right? And as a sliding defender, you want to take body. And that's what he did. You know, Goldstein a little bit undersized. And just that, that hit... Makes the pass go Nathan out of bounds. Nathan Levine will take the ball across the midfield line. Second midfield will now come out. Jackson Burke whistle for Syracuse. Alongside Stevens and Roa. Roa now draws Gilmartin. And here's Spelina having Singer hung up. Options for Joey Spelina. As the Cuse offense goes to work. 39 seconds left on the shot clock. Spelina being very, very patient, letting the play develop in front of him. Spelina still looking for an option. Nust being patient as well in cage. 25 seconds on the shot clock. No options for 22. And boy, boy, the players inside just working yeah. hard to try and get open. But Cornell doing a good job communicating and switching. Spelina will go. Slide from Gilmartin. Right there, though, is Luke Roa, who gets it past Nust. And because of the slide, Roa takes advantage all alone. And he'll make it a 16-10 game for Syracuse. And just an opportunity, just the patience, the patience. Then they use the pick, they slip the pick, and he's able to just get the ball, come right around unguarded, put the bouncer past Roa, converting, just not letting an opportunity 
Second goal of the game for Luke Roa. There is now six players on Syracuse with at least two goals. And the Orange are up 16-10 over to Cornell Big Red. Tom LaFalse as Syracuse, whether it's playing fast or playing a bit slower, the offense really just hasn't missed a beat at all. No, I mean, they've, they've converted throughout this contest. And Cornell not winning as many faceoffs as they need to win. Maybe an opportunity to win one without Mason Cohn on the field. And the violation will bring this over to Cornell's side. So John Mullen can't quite keep up the faceoff winning streak of Cohn. And now this, once again, comes down to the situation that Cornell is used to, really. And if they're not winning faceoffs, it's all about making these offensive possessions count. They have to, right? I mean, you, you got to start chipping away. And, and some of that's going to be, you know, getting stops. You know, the, the clock is, is quickly becoming an enemy for the Big Red, even with, you know, a full quarter to go. Huge slide coming over to Kelleher. Ball was now up for grabs as Caden Cole is trying to fight alongside Michael Long, and eventually Michael Long picks it back up, flipping it over and finds Kelleher. And might just get a settled situation, or still unsettled. Spencer Worth on thought about a shot, looking for C.J. Kirst in the middle. And it passed a little bit too hard for the Tortorn Award finalist from last year to handle. Going the other way in transition, but this time a failed clear on the Syracuse side. And no, not a failed clear because somehow it found a stick of Mule. I thought that was in Dooley's stick, but Dooley no. did have it, and, and they made the, the play to, to create the turnover. Huge job from Mule. Behind the back pass to Mule. Right onto the crease for and Sam Cornell English. Ball. Dooley heads up play, getting to the end line to win the run out. Hero of the Princeton game gets the back up here for Cornell. And once again, it's another opportunity for Cornell offensive possession, which, like you said, with time slowly becoming an enemy for the Big Red, everything becomes so, so precious for this Cornell team. Risky, risky That's pass. That's playing without a cross. That's obvious. Once you lose your stick, you've got to come right off the field. He was slow to get off the field, and he kind of grabbed the player. And so this will give the ball right back over to Cornell. Second midfield line will trot out here for Coach Busek. Ryan yeah, Sheehan to initiate. Finn Thompson, who was playing without the cross. Even though Kirst has had three goals and an assist, Dewan has done a decent job to limit any further impact that Kirst has had on this game. Kirst will back things off. Found Goldstein in the middle. Michael Long couldn't quite put nice, it on cage. Nice job. That's one of the few times Cornell's been able to get inside today. Good look by Goldstein to find Long, who kept his feet moving, just unable to put it on cage. Jeanne has the short stick and Nathan Levine. They're passed up top to Nick Lick. Now Kirsch working against Duan. Gets a screen. A little bit of space. Here's Andrew Dalton. Got around Rice, and that one just hit side netting. Just a toe drag to get around an over-aggressive defender, but didn't have enough of an angle there to create it into a scoring opportunity. And a good job from Will Mark to cover his near post. Figueres slipping a little bit. Long now pressuring. And it will be Figueres who gets it across the halfway line. Was Syracuse offsides? They might have been. We're going the other way. And again, here we go. And I was got to make these possessions count. And then Will Mark, so that got deflected somehow. It got deflected yeah. <laughs> right out. It was not, didn't make it to the goal. Yeah, well, it looked like Mark had that maybe red as he was dipping down to try and stop that. But this has been a real hot and cold game, right? Cornell scored yep. eight goals in the second quarter. They have not scored a goal yet. We've only got four minutes left here in the third. They've been stuck on 10 for a long time now. Only two goals in this quarter after 28 goals in the first two. CJ Kirst, his shot might have been altered by Sam Alexo on the way in. Boy, that's a, a spot on the field he usually converts at a very high percentage. Yeah, a good job there from one of the best long stick middies in the entirety of Division I lacrosse, Sam Alexo. He'll kill her right into the stick of Will Mark. Wide that red all the way. Mark seems to have sort of settled in here. Um, Mark's now in, up to nine this, saves. Yeah, in this second half. And again, Cornell probably shooting a little further away from the goal than they might like otherwise. 
I mean, with Cornell, so much of Cornell is, like you said, getting those injury passes, getting those passes onto the crease to set up those high percentage looks. And just because of how tight the Syracuse defense has been playing, Cornell has not been able to find those looks on offense. English gets a screen. Michael Leo has got the short stick matchup against Luke Gilmartin. He'll invert. Slipped a little. Bill Martin, the Syracuse native playing against his hometown college team. And a good stop from Nust, stopping Leo right on the doorstep. Second save of the game for Wyatt Nust. Into the game at halftime. And Matt Dooley will take things across the halfway line. He's playing dangerously near the sideline, yep. and Coach Time Busek is going to call a timeout. I, I was surprised it took him that long. I think he was giving him a chance to see if he could get free to save that timeout. Yeah, no but at this that. point, you know, 224 left in the third quarter. Possessions start to become even more valuable, and part of the reason for that is because of the face-off uh, great work that Syracuse has done in this contest. They've won 17 to 25 face-offs in this game. So Cornell with 224 to go. They've got 67 to shoot, so no issues there. Three goals and an assist for C.J. Kirst. And you imagine that he'll want a little bit more. And like you said, all going all the way back to the first quarter, how much does Kirst want to put on his own back and try and carry this team to a closer game here against Syracuse? Yeah, the well, key, the key and, offensive possession coming up. And I up. think Michael Long has given them a lot in this game, too. In some ways, I would see if you could go have him initiate from behind and see what he could create. Long with three goals and three assists. Here's Kelleher. That's a slide. Figueres is going to get called for a flag. He doesn't like that call from the official. Long will score. That's four goals for Michael Long. And you hope if you're Cornell that they call this a one-minute foul so that you can go on an extra man opportunity coming right out of this. Just the aggressive dodge here by Kelleher. There's the flag. He throws it right back to Long, who steps in and just lets it fly. They do give Kelleher an assist on that. That's Long's fourth of the game. Kelleher's first point and, of the game. And it is going to be a one-minute foul, so Cornell will have an opportunity to go extra man here uh, if they're able, again, but it's going to come back to can they win this faceoff? And Syracuse in these situations in this game has done a good job of neutralizing Cornell. Mason Cohn has only lost three faceoffs the entire game. They that will continue here as he wins his 15th faceoff in 18 tries for Syracuse. And now an opportunity for Cor Syracuse to try and kill off the penalty, but Tommy Drago loses the ball on the check and the ride from Cornell. That's the Cornell ride you expect to see. And here comes Cornell on the man up. And we mentioned it, right? It's this idea of it's one thing to, to win a faceoff statistically. It's another thing to be able to get the exit, to be able to actually get the full possession. Here we see Syracuse is locking off C.J. Kerr. So Cornell have the opportunity to go uh, a five on four type and you see, oh, CJ Kirst, CJ Kirst, four goals for CJ Kirst. Wow, that's, I tell you, that, to get that kind of a goal like that, they assumed that Kirst was going behind to, 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 um, to back up the cage and just sort of, just got lazy for a second there and Kirst cuts through the middle and gets the nice pass. Yeah, you saw Nick Frederigo kind of slide over to his left and that opened up the space for Kirst. It was the short stick Jake Titus. It was man marking CJ Kirst and eventually just lost him. So a small two goal run here for Cornell and just kind of the season of Cornell. It's all about trying to go on long runs and stopping long runs. That's been Cornell's entire season. Yeah, I mean, we're back to a, a four goal game again. And, and it starts to feel suddenly a bit more manageable for Cornell, but Mason Cohn wins yet another faceoff. 16 of 19 from the faceoff dot is Mason Cohn. Boy, how have Syracuse needed a faceoff guy as dominant as Cohn for such a long, long time? And Mason Cohn is giving them that as Syracuse has their sights set on Memorial Day weekend. Less than a minute to go here in the quarter. Syracuse can hold for one shot. So again, we talked about these momentum plays. This yeah. becomes an important possession. Cornell needs to get a stop here, see if they can get out of this quarter just down four. Jackson Burke whistle is taking Kyle Smith on a journey on the invert. Syracuse has initiated a lot in this second half with Spelina from behind. 
see if they try to go to that again, perhaps play a little two-man game to see if they could get him a, a short stick matchup. Spelina is lurking here. Smith will stick with Berkwis. So Berkwis was looking for Mule, and that was a nice stop there from Nust. Ball picked up, though, by Syracuse. Luke Roa all the way up top found a shot. Hilt looking in the middle. Stevens can't quite handle the ball. Nust out of cage. And we'll let this third quarter expire. Boy, only four goals were scored in this quarter, but a lot of lacrosse still left to be played. It is still a four-goal lead for the Syracuse Orange as we enter a very, very interesting final 15 minutes coming up here at Shokoff Field. Syracuse leading 16-12 after an explosive first half, which saw a combined 24 goals scored between the two teams. Now at 28 goals after only two goals were scored, somehow, bizarrely, only two goals were scored apiece for each team in the third quarter. Again, I think that's the pace that uh, Cornell would like, and here's a faceoff violation. Called against John Mullen. So Cornell have an opportunity. They go quickly. Mark Silos decided to go quickly, is staying on the field. Here's Michael Long. Four goals for Michael Long, four goals for C.J. Kirst. One of the other big differences, the scoring has been so diverse for, for Syracuse on the Cornell side, only five goal scorers. Long. We'll find a charging Kelleher. Worth nine. Up top to Firth. Willem Firth got his shot redirected on the way in. Yeah, he kind of lost it, and then here Cornell tries to get a ride back, and they do. CJ Kirst with another cause turnover. Jeez. So one of the hidden talents of C.J. Kirst, cause turnovers. That is C.J. Kirst's 11th cause turnover of the year. You don't see 11 cause turnovers from a normal attackman, but C.J. Kirst is no normal attackman. Ryan Goldstein and a huge stop from Will Mark on his near post. He's got to get one more step on that one. He really didn't have much of an angle there. And again, it seems like Cornell can't get under a four-goal deficit. Every time they've gotten to this point lately, uh, Syracuse has gotten the next one. It would have been good for them to try and get one there. I mean, you said yeah. this. You said this during our break. Next goal is going to be important. The ride coming from Syracuse for Cornell, excuse me, has been absolutely on fire to start this fourth quarter. And an off-ball push. Yes, Cornell's getting this ball back. The Cornell sideline roars to life. First midfield is going to stay on as well. Now uh, they'll no, rotate they're out. Him yeah. out. They're going to change him out. Yeah, I mean, you said this during um, our third or fourth quarter break. This next goal is massive. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you, you, they have not been able to get it under, to, down to three in a while, and you got to start to feel like you're, you know, you're putting a dent in that lead. CJ Curse can't find it past the cage of Mark. Mark's up to 10 saves now. Started, came into the, started the second half with only five. Goldstein got around his defender, Ryan Goldstein on the board once again. The fourth game for Ryan Goldstein in his young Cornell career. It's his ninth goal in a Cornell big red uniform. Just a speed dodge, he stayed patient with it. Took the first opportunity, pulls back, gets underneath the defender, switches hands to be able to protect his stick, gets inside, no slide comes. And that's, that's three in a row now for Cornell. And also there's the change also for Syracuse that they always seem to make. Taking out Caden Cole and bringing in Nick Kakemo. That was Kakemo on Goldstein. And couldn't quite keep up with the talented freshman. Yet another big face off. Coden Silos lock sticks. His ball really up for grabs. And it's Charlie Box who picks it up. And Box will find Silos. Both Fogos keeping each other on the field for a long time in this game. That's again, Cornell's just trying to muck it up. Wertheim head full of steam. They'll take Jake Spolina on the invert. Jerome Firth has also got the short stick in Wyatt Hoddle. Firth back to its cage. Willem Firth was more closest to that. No, it is long. No, it was far enough away from the cage. Looks like they're trying to go to Firth here. They did on the last possession. They try again here. Firth found Kelleher all alone. Why? Hugh, Hugh Kelleher. Two goal lead. 
This is the Cornell lacrosse. The team of runs, they can let up runs, but they can go on big runs themselves. And this this is really the first time we've seen Kelleher get his hands free. Just the defense had sloughed all over to Firth, and that creates the opportunity for the step down shot from the backside. First goal for Hugh Kelleher in the game. First assist for Willem Firth. Firth's up to six assists on the season. Kelleher takes himself up, goal number 13 on the year. Yet another huge face-off coming. Cone in silos. Lock horns once again. And this Boy, time it's Cone tough. once again. That's 17 of 21. Face-off wins for Cone. Silos causes a turnover, and here's Long. So now you're at a place if you're Cornell. Again, this tempo has been much more to their liking. No rush here. I have to tell you that if they can get one here. Yeah, this, this place will pop off. Yeah, no question. The theoretical S roof of Shokoff Field yeah. would be no more. Second second midfield group. Ryan Sheehan, the Camillus native, the son of the legendary Lemoyne coach, Dan Sheehan. High step from Kirst. Kirst gets the Sam Alexo matchup. Interesting to put Alexo on Curse. Double initially came from Kakemo. Curse lost it. Got it slightly tripped up. Found all the way up top to Ryan Sheehan and Will Mark saw it all the way. But again, can Cornell get a ride back here? An opportunity here for the Cornell ride to try and force something. Here comes Long coming up against Alexo and Alexo will get it across the halfway line. And finally, Syracuse gets an offensive possession here in the fourth quarter. Come back with their first midfield. We've seen a heavy dose of this midfield all game long for Syracuse. So much barking on both sides. Communication so, so important at this stage of the game. Finn Thompson has a short stick. Same with Christian Moulet. That's been an interesting thing as yeah, well. This is a matchup I think if I were Syracuse, I would keep going to. I mean, Christian Moulet has found himself on a short stick pretty much the entire game. Doesn't have a goal, but has two assists. Leo lost it for a second. English will now get Kyle Smith. 10 seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Owen Hiltz is going to have to let one rip. Owen Hiltz, and it's a low stop from Wyatt Nuss. That is his fourth save of the game. He's really solidified the Cornell defense here in the second half. That's a big stop for Cornell. And a huge change for Coach Busek to call in Wyatt Nuss. Four saves, two goals allowed for the original starting goalkeeper this year for the Cornell Big Red. And Spencer Wertheim's directing traffic. He wants everyone to clear out since he has the short stick huddle. Yeah, he usually likes to invert, and they're going to take the opportunity here. Former attack man Spencer Wertheim. Gets a huge slide coming in, and Goldstein picks the ball back up. Found long. Firth got around a man. Willem Firth Locked. shot deflected on the way in. Firth will pick it right back up. 30 seconds approaching on the shot clock. Kirst, double came, Long all alone in the middle, still has the ball, and Michael Long had it forced out. And a oh, flag and is going to fly against costly. Syracuse. I mean, that, excuse me, a flag is going to fly against Cornell. You cannot have that type of flag that's thrown right. against you. That's a costly error. We talk about momentum swings all the time, and this is just one of the biggest opportunities for a momentum swing coming. Since if Syracuse doesn't score, that vaunted man up offense is coming back on the field. Well, and Cornell had an opportunity. They got it inside to Michael Long. He was just not able to get the shot off. And so, so if Syracuse can hold here for a good possession and as we've kind of started to mention, Clock is their friend, even though it's a two-goal lead. Clock is still much on the side of Syracuse. Luke Rowe is taking Gilmartin on the invert. You see Spalina and Singer 
stick fighting with each other. Moulet all alone in the middle. Moulet will put that shot wide. And here comes the man up opportunity here for the Syracuse Orange. I think the foul is going to be against uh, Ryan Goldstein. Goldstein is the one heading to the penalty for box. For a cross check. One minute foul. Well, actually, it's going to be on Kelleher. Yeah, it is Kelleher who's getting called for that. Wyatt Nuss has not faced a man down opportunity yet. This is going to be a huge test for Wyatt Nuss. His first action seeing six on five. Again, he hasn't played since that Penn State game where he only had one save and six goals allowed in the first quarter. Well, now I want to switch to Matt Tully. But now Coach Busek has gone back to Wyatt Nuss. And Owen Hiltz had I his that ball got, deflected. I yeah. think that came off a Cornell stick. Me too, yeah. But, no, but it's Syracuse coming out didn't way. think about it. I mean, there's two things, right? The guy who was going after the ball clearly thought he had to save it. Yeah. Right? That said, I thought it was off a Cornell stick. Me too. But most of the rest of the Syracuse players reacted as if it was off a Cornell stick. See, damn. And usually the referees, you know, will yell out who, whose stick that went off so that everyone is, you know, clear about who's getting the that ball. The only thing that surprises me is that the Syracuse player who was closest to it was going as if it was not hit. Let's take a look here. As it was either Staub or Ray Hill. Boy. Can't quite tell from that angle. I'm not sure if it got hit through there. If we've got another replay, we'll take a look. For me, when I saw it live, I thought it was me off too. a Cornell stick. It, it looked like it changed directions, definitely, or had some sort of velocity change on the ball, which would have indicated it went off a stick of some kind. Still 45 in the extra man here for Syracuse. So Syracuse may be catching a break here. Oh, S Stevens can't get a pass on target to Hiltz. That's a huge blunder there. Listen to Shokoff roar. Luke Gilmartin. It's a tough clear for him to make. And he'll get it over to Spencer Wertheim. So now you've got about 18 left in the foul. So if you're Cornell here, you get your personnel sort of moving in the right direction and you wait until you get all six, they're gonna come out with that sort of a mixed group here, probably because you've got Kelleher who's gotta hold the whole foul, right? So you're seeing Firth Full come. Strength. Goldstein comes through the midfield, goes behind the cage. Nikolic is the one who's replacing Kelleher. Worth had the short stick, same with Wertheim. Syracuse is very aggressive with their slide packages here. So if you're Cornell, you see, you know, can you get that slide game moving and then take advantage of behind it with ball movement? 20 seconds for Ryan Goldstein working against Nick Kakema. 10 on the timer. Here's Nikolic. Long has a short stick. It's Nathan Levine, seven seconds. Long all the way up tough. Spencer Wertheim has hands free. And Will Mark saw it all the way. a ground ball by yeah. C.J. Kirst and Huge. a new shot clock. Huge ground ball from C.J. Kirst. It's a fresh 60 on the way. Michael Long still has the short stick. Can Cornell find Long on the short stick once again? He does. Willem first found Michael Long on the short stick matchup. It is a one-goal game in Ithaca. Firth has really, Firth has really been feeling it in this half. He's been initiating quite a bit. He comes off a top center and he looks across the goal and he finds Michael Long, See, makes Cornell the catch with his left hand and we've got to have a timeout here as Cornell gets this down to a one goal Syracuse lead with 5.29 to go. Syracuse started this game on a seven nothing run and Cornell who has not led in this game has got it all the way down to a one goal deficit here in Ithaca. in a return to this great rivalry between two of the best teams in historically in Central New York and in lacrosse. This faceoff win big, and it's going to go to Aiden Blake. Working up against John Bullen and Mark Silos, it's Aiden Blake on the wing who picks it up. And now Cornell goes on to clear. And eventually it's Blake who picks it back up and gets it over to Staub on the transition. So Cornell will have a chance yeah. to see if they can pull even here. Cornell has not led in this game. 
It has been all Syracuse since the opening tip. Syracuse started this game on a 7-0 blitz in the first quarter. And you see Hugh Kelher working all the way back. He'll get the switch from Figueres. First against Dwan. Goldstein's all alone. Decides not to use it. We'll go up to Kelher. Worth time against Rice. Firth against Hoddle. Will Firth got underneath and a great low stop from Will Mark. Kelleher there first for the backup. Fresh 60 coming for Cornell. 13th save of the game for Will Mark. They have just been riding Firth here. He, they just really like this matchup and look what they're going to do. They're going to come right back to it again. Two assists for Willem Firth on this game. And then they're going to jodge the short on the opposite side. Wertheim against, Wertheim against Rice. Spencer Wertheim will get it up to Goldstein. Ryan Goldstein! Oh, Mark's what a save. save from Will Mark going down, reaching the stick up high to make his 14th save of the game. And probably none bigger than that one. Clock's now on the Syracuse side as well. Oh, lazy pass from Rice. Hiltz couldn't quite control it. We're going the other way. Listen to Shokoff Field roar. Five seconds on the clear. Oh, and Cornell a good heads-up play by Kirst to, to come and help. That's, that's the hidden IQ of C.J. Kirst that you don't often get. You will see the goals and the assists, but one of the smartest players in all of college lacrosse. Second midfield here for Cornell. Three minutes left to go in this game. Golden had some space, same with Long. Met by Figueres and a great slide from Figueres to force the ball out of Long's stick. Riley Figueres injured his entire freshman year right into the starting lineup as a sophomore. And this clear goes over cleanly for Syracuse. And a huge, again, time continues to tick off the clock. And Syracuse is probably now just in clock killing mode. I mean, you got to stay aggressive. You've got to stay aggressive here if you're Syracuse because, you know, it, it seems like it's a lot of time, but it can be a lifetime in lacrosse. Second midfield is out for Coach Gary Gate, and I think he called a timeout. He did. Let's go here at the top of your screen. And once again, it is Mule facing off against a short stick. That's Luke Gilmartin. Mule is shoved around by Gilmartin. 30 on the timer. Mule gets across, GLE. Slide comes from Aiden Blake. Hiltz. 15 to shoot. Mule against Blake. Mule lost the handle. Picked up by Singer. Here comes Blake. Spolina chasing after him. Blake gets the clear. Here yep. we go. Gilmartin hands it off. CJ Curse kick save from Mark. What a huge save from Mark. Dooley picks it back up. He'll go over. CJ Curse picks it back up. Now the question is, does Cornell call a timeout here? Coach Busick has one more to his advantage. Does he let us just players play? He's getting the first midfield out here. One goal game in Ithaca. Hurst, one minute left. Wertheim, bounce save by Mark. And into the crease for the Syracuse netminder. 15 saves for Will Mark. Make it 16 saves for Will Mark, who has absolutely come up clutch for the Orange at the end of this game. Aggressive ride coming out. 10-man ride coming up for Cornell. This 10-man so, so aggressive for Cornell. Still up for grabs. Sam Alexo loses it. Spencer Wertheim picks it back up. Gets it over to Firth. 24 seconds. All alone. Goldstein! We're tied! 
wow, that was a ride that just never ended for Cornell. They just kept with it and kept with it and kept with it. Finally, they were able to create the turnover and a good opportunity there, a good move by Wertheim of looking down the field and Goldstein makes no doubt about it after, I would tell you, Will Mark has made several big stops in this and then Cornell is able to do that. Now, 19.8 seconds is plenty of time if you're Syracuse to get a face-off win. Both teams have a timeout. That's the big thing. Both teams have a timeout. This face-off massive. Mason Cohn is 17 of 21 at the face-off X. Can't make it 18. Mark Silos picks it up. Will Coach Busek call time? Silos takes it. Mark Silos! Mark Silos scores! Cornell has taken its first lead of the game with 10 seconds left! And you could see Connor Busick on the sideline was waiting to call a timeout, waiting to call a timeout, and he said, we got a chance to go to goal. And Mark Silos coming up with a big play. He gets his own ground ball, and he just comes right down the side here just and keeps going, and no defender came to him, puts it up high, and now we're going to have a timeout here just to, if you're Cornell, to make sure you got everything all set up with your first lead of the game at 17 to 16. He needs, he needs to, get this, to, to get the tie up here and just prevent an opportunity because this has been the type of a game where it wouldn't surprise me that Syracuse could come down and score very quickly. That's what you have with Mason Cohn. He has done that. He has, five, he has a goal already in this game, six goals this season for Syracuse. Can Silos tie this up long enough? Ball squirts pass, picks up to Stevens. Five seconds, English running. English got past the defender and he got it under. Wyatt Glass, we're all tied up at 17. Back at 1.1 second, we're most likely headed to overtime here in Ithaca. It was a, what clean, a, game. a clean, quick face-off win out to the wing. Stevens finds his former Princeton teammate, English, and just Aiden Blake just didn't get the hit on him when he came out to try and try and stop him. Sam English, when he last played Cornell back in 2022, had five goals. He now has three goals here tonight, and we're all tied back up at 17. One last whistle to conclude things. Tom, we are headed to overtime in Ithaca. And as I said, I thought 10 seconds was was enough time, right? I said that it right was. before that faceoff, and it was just barely. This has oh. been just a game Woo. of momentum changes throughout. Just a great college lacrosse game. You thought that we were done. Yeah. We thought you had a wild game the last time these two teams played. We're headed to overtime once again between Syracuse and Cornell, all tied up at 17 here in Ithaca. Right there, you saw Jake Stevens and Sam Minguish, the two Princeton transfers, teaming up to haunt Cornell once again. Here we go. All right. So <laughs> once again, Cornell finds itself in overtime for its second straight game. This series game back in overtime for a second straight year. It was Hugh Kelleher two years ago in the JMA Wireless Dome, the hero for Cornell at that day. Obviously, a big face off here to see who will get the first chance. A tie up between Cone and Silos, and it's knocked down and picked up by Jake Stevens. Will Coach Gate you need to use a timeout? I'd oh. play it out. Only three goals for Syracuse in the second half. How much of that is because they do not have Pat Marsh on the sidelines? If you're just joining us, first of all, where have you been? Second of all, <laughs> the first quarter of this game, at the end of the first quarter, Pat Marsh was ejected from this game due to unsportsmanlike conduct, which seems like ages ago. Thompson. Found Michael Leo all alone. Aggressive slide coming from Matt Dooley. Timeout by Syracuse. And in and again, some ways, that may have served Cornell well because yeah. that was close to a foul. Number 13 and white. And then you do have Luke Gilmartin as the shorty on Mule inside. Thompson will take box on a journey. And up top. Here's English. Gets the slide. Now English has the box matchup. Got a roundup. Sam English, what a save from Lust. 
Big ground ball coming up. Stom had no idea where it was, but Gilmartin did. That's the fifth save for Wyatt Nuss coming into this game at halftime. Now with an important clear coming up. Gilmartin across the field. Can't get it to Stom. Turnover. Syracuse gets the ball back with a fresh 80. And Cornell will call a timeout here. It'll be Blake on Finn Thompson. And we'll do it again with Thompson now having Aiden Blake on him, the short stick matchup. And again, Gil Martin is matched up with Christian Mule inside. Michael Leo has Brendan Staub, the long stick midi. English couldn't handle the ball initially, has follows for company. All the way to Mule, who can't handle it either. Another the slick, turnover. The slick field playing gains with both teams. And now here comes Cornell on the clear. Now remember, Cornell has used their timeout. Both teams have used their timeout, I believe. Yep. So we are going the entire rest of the two minutes here in the first overtime. Nust found a long pole. Here's plenty Michael Long. Stops still on the field. Your Cornell, get your personnel right. Michael Long against Figueres. First midfield for the Big Red. They have been going to Willem Firth quite a bit in this second half. It'll be interesting to see if they try to initiate for him. Now, they've changed the matchup a little bit. They've put a, a pole on Firth now. Long, directing traffic. Which likely means you're going to see Hugh Kelleher come around the back Firth. with a shorty. Here is Kelleher. And he's been in this position against Syracuse in overtime before. Hugh Kelleher, the hero in the last time these two teams played in overtime. A free C.J. Kirst, all the way up top. C.J. Kirst can't get the bouncer on target. Still 17 on the shot clock, 16 on the shot clock for Cornell here with 1.15 left in the first overtime. Kirst to initiate. Kirst will initiate with Don Dwan covering him. C.J. Kirst, burst of speed. C.J. Kirst, flag flies, huge flag flying. Kirst. Over to Goldstein, who just missed the target. Oh, right, and Goldstein wants that one back. Yeah, he would like that one back because he had plenty, plenty to look at there. But Cornell will have an extra man opportunity. And importantly, there was only two seconds left on the shot clock there as well because of the penalty. That's a fresh 60 coming. Look at this again as Curse with his right hand finds Goldstein in front. Patiently walks, gets past the defender, but unable to put it on cage. So Cornell's extra man will have an opportunity here to see if they can close this out. It's a one-minute foul. And for all intents and purposes, this one minute will take us the rest of the first overtime period. And that's an interesting question if you're Cornell. Do you, do you decide to just run a little clock first so that if you do not convert, you don't give Syracuse any time left? Well, first, just missed high. Guess the answer to that is no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Rory Graham, initiating with six on five. The extra against, man specialist. Against the specially man down defense for Syracuse. Michael Long, up top to Kelleher. Kirst, over to Firth. Kelleher, Long, 30 seconds left on the man up. CJ Kirst, just and Mr. No White. Backer. Marcus, the first one there. Danny Cadigan was not there on the backup. And Syracuse can kill off the rest of the man up and most likely take us to the second overtime. Well, we've got plenty of time here. Yeah, will Syracuse look for a man down goal? No timeouts for either team to spend. 15 seconds left in the quarter. Aggressive double coming here from Cornell. English got around a couple of men, but decides not to go to goal. Luke Roa. Two seconds, one. Luke Rowe, a great save from Nuss. Horn sounds, double overtime for Cornell for the second straight game. Let's head to double overtime between Syracuse and Cornell. If you stuck with us the entire way here on ESPN Plus, we thank you very much. Christian. Again, we've talked about it. It's, it's not only winning the faceoff, but it's actually getting the offensive possession. So even if uh, you're able to win the faceoff, you still gotta sort of get away from the scrum and the battle for the ground ball. Staub and English, uh, Staub and Stevens on the near side wings. The far side wings are Alexo and I think Aiden Blake. This ball squirts out. Stevens looking to try and get there first and he will. Again, both teams have a timeout again now that we're in this second overtime period. 
So Syracuse will have the first chance here. And they'll bring out the second midfield line. Here's Luke Roa up top. He'll take the short stick and Aiden Blake. Luke Roa got around Aiden Blake and a huge stop from Wyatt Nust. A little bit of a weird pass though for Matt Dooley and Dooley will pick it back up. Hounded by blue jerseys, he's forced out of bounds. Has to get this ball back. 10 seconds left for Cornell to clear. And they do with stop coming around. CJ Kirst is all alone, but he'll settle things down. Oh, what a start to this second overtime well, that was, period. That was a little bit of a scramble. The nice save by Nust and then Dooley just doing a good job of just maintaining possession until he could find some help. CJ Kirst has four goals and an assist. Doing battle with Billy Dwan. CJ Kirst around GLE. Up top to Hugh Kelleher, the first midfield for Cornell. Willem Firth had a step. All the way up top, Hugh Kelleher. Hugh Kelleher, spin dodge. We'll just get it back. Willem Firth just missed it. This is going to be a close battle to the ball. It's going to go to Syracuse. First there was Carter Rice. That was really, really close. I think it was the right call, but it was really close. So now Cornell can set up their ride here. Syracuse has failed six clears in this game. Can the Cornell ride force another failed one? Kakemo on the far sideline, looking for an option. Is going to go across the field to Dwan. Long comes charging in, and it's over to Nathan Levine. So clean clear here for Syracuse as the first midfield trots back on out for the Orange. Finn Thompson. No one else. Moulet to the ground. He's got a shorty. That's Charlie Box. The shorty also on Leo. That's Aiden Blake on Michael Leo. And usually they've had the pole in this matchup in this game. Owen Hiltz against Dooley. Leo against Blake. Syracuse spreading out the offense. Leo gets around Blake, decides not to go to Cage. Backs it up to Spolina. Joey Spolina against Jason Singer. Gets a screen. In the middle, Finn Thompson. A huge save for Nust. Absolutely that's hounded. That should be a hold. A hold. Yep. And Jack follows. We'll secure the possession. Wyatt Nust has come up absolutely huge in this game for Cornell. Now they must have said he lost that ball because I thought he had possession. Now the clear coming as Aiden Blake will get it over to CJ Kirst. Now with a minute to go here, you can hold for the last shot. You run a little clock and then use your timeout. Yeah, Coach Busek still has his timeout. Essentially, Cornell can hold for the final shot here in double overtime. Spencer Wertheim gets around Hoddle, gets a screen. Wertheim, all alone. CJ Kirst, all alone! CJ Kirst has won the game for Cornell! They went right to the cage. They liked that matchup with Spencer Wertheim against the short stick. And he has just a little throwback for CJ Kirst, who gets Cornell a huge 18 to 17 win here at Sholkoff Field. Just a remarkable college lacrosse game. Offense at both ends in the first half. And here's Wertheim, takes on the dodge. He uses the pick, the throwback to Kirst, who just steps in, lets it fly low, and beats Mark to give Cornell the 18-17 stunning come from behind victory here at Sholkoff Field. Uh, <laughs> really a great gut check win for Cornell to be able to come back after a tough double overtime loss at Penn this past weekend to come back and get this 